Hello everybody and welcome back to another lecture video. In this lecture video we're going to be covering the point collocation method and a little bit of a secret between us. This is my favorite approximation method. The reason why? Well it's kind of a trolley method and once we get into the theory you guys will see why. So as I mentioned the point collocation method it's very simple. What we do in this method is we select an approximation and we basically ensure two things. One is that our approximation function satisfies the boundary conditions and two, our approximation function satisfies the governing equation at very specific points called collocation points. And that's it. So the best way to really show you guys this method is through an example. So let's say that we had a one dimensional beam here and it's loaded actually by a distributed load P, which is equal to some constant C times X1. Now we know from the theory that this beam is going to be governed by the following differential equation, where it's EA multiplied by the second derivative of our displacement function is equal to negative P. So if I were to say, all right, well, I have this beam and I have this governing differential equation, I can say, well, I'm going to approximate my solution using a third order polynomial. Now, as you guys remember from approximation functions, it doesn't have to be third order. We can have a fourth order, sixth order, whatever you guys want. It's really up to you. So for this particular example, I'm going to pick a third order where I say that my approximate displacement solution is equal to a0 plus a1 times x1 plus a2 times x1 squared plus a3 times x1 cubed. So what we're going to do is we're going to solve for these a coefficients just like we would the rayleigh ritz method or the virtual work method. But we're going to do it a little bit differently. What we're going to do is we're just going to ensure that our approximation solution satisfies two things. The first is the boundary condition. So this is the boundary condition on the left side of the beam as well as the right side of the beam. And then the second one is satisfying collocation points. Now these collocation points can be anywhere you guys like on the beam. So for instance, I put a green one here roughly around the center of the beam. But again, you guys can pick whatever one you want. Now you may be saying, all right, Clayton, well, what exactly do we mean by satisfying these collocation points? Well, what we mean is that when we pick a point, we make sure that at that very specific point, our differential equation holds true. So basically, we take that differential equation and we apply it to the specific point and we make sure that it's equal. This will allow us to create an equation and solve for an unknown, as you guys will see. So let's go into the first step of our actual problem here. Again, we have our beam. It's distributed loaded by a load of C times X1. And we said that our approximate solution is as follows. Now what I'm going to do to make my life a little bit easier later on is I'm going to take the derivative of our approximation function and that's going to be equal to a1 plus 2 times a2x1 plus 3 times a3x1 squared. Now remember that the first step in this method is to satisfy these boundary conditions and if we look at the beam here we have two boundary conditions one on the left one on the right. The easiest one is the one on the left since the beam is fixed there we know that the displacement at x1 is equal to 0 must be equal to 0. Therefore, our approximate solution at x1 is equal to 0 must be equal to 0. Therefore, we already know that a0 is going to be equal to 0. Now, the one on the right-hand side, this is where it gets a little bit more complex. We know that the stress at x1 is equal to L is going to be equal to 0. But this kind of poses a problem because stress isn't a valid boundary condition. Remember, we're dealing with displacements. However, we can actually relate stress to strain. And what's great about that is the strain is actually the derivative of our displacement function, which is then equal to our stress divided by our elastic modulus. So from this, we can deduce that the derivative of our approximation function at x1 is equal to L. Well, that's going to be zero. So that's actually going to be the boundary condition on the right hand side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute the value of x1 equal to zero into this equation, and I can solve for a1, where a1 is equal to negative one times two a2L plus 3a3l squared. So what I'm going to do now is to say, all right, well, I satisfied my essential boundary conditions and I was able to solve for two of the a coefficients. So I'm going to take those two a coefficients and I'm now going to update my approximate solution. Now, if we look here, we say, all right, well, after the boundary conditions, it looks better, but we still have some unknowns, namely a2 and a3. So the question becomes, how do we solve for these remaining unknowns? Well, that's where the collocation method comes in and specifically collocation points. So again, we have our nice updated approximate solution. And just for fun, I'm going to take the second derivative of our approximation function, and that gets me 2a2 plus 6a3 times x1. So from here, I get to pick a collocation point. Now again, you guys can pick whatever point you guys want, but I'm going to pick a point at let's say x1 is equal to l over 2, so at the mid-span of the beam. 
Now again, we know that the beam is governed by the following differential equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that EA and I'm just simply going to move it to the other side. And then this leads me to the following equation, where the second derivative of my approximate solution must be equal to C times X1 divided by EA. And this right here is the equation that we have to ensure that our collocation point satisfies. So if we pick our collocation point at x1 is equal to L over 2, all I'm going to do is simply substitute x1 is equal to L over 2 into our equation. This gives me 2 times a2 plus 6 times a3 times L over 2 is equal to negative c times L over 2 divided by ea. Now as we can see here, we don't really have any x's anymore, we just have a2 and a3. This will allow me to actually solve for a2, and we get a2 is equal to negative 1 times cl divided by 4ea plus 3a3l divided by 2. So what we can just say, all right, this is great. I now know what a2 is. I can update my approximation. And as we can see here, it looks a little bit more gross, which is expected. But we only have one unknown, and that's now a3. So again, just like before, we say, all right, well, I still have unknowns. What do I do? Well, I simply just pick another collocation point. I'm going to take my updated approximation. I'm going to update the second derivative of this approximation. And I'm going to pick another collocation point. This time I decided to pick x1 is equal to L. Now again, just want to really make it clear you guys can pick whatever point you guys want. It doesn't really matter because you guys will still end up with an equation for an unknown. So what we have is we have our differential equation here, but this time we're substituting a value of x1 is equal to L. From that I get this, and if we look at this equation very closely, even though it looks pretty disgusting, it's nice in the fact that our only unknown now is actually a3. Therefore, if we solve this equation, we get a3 is equal to negative c divided by 6ea. From this, we can substitute this into our approximation to get our final approximation. Now, you guys may be wondering, why is it our final approximation? Well, if we look at this approximation function right now, there is no more a coefficients. a0, a1, a2, and a3, they have all been solved for. Therefore, our approximation function is simply just a function of x1, which is exactly what we wanted. So in the end, we get our approximation function as c times l squared divided by 2ea times x1 minus c divided by 6ea times x1 cubed. Now, if you guys were to compare this to the exact solution, it is actually the exact same as the exact solution. Now, I don't want you guys getting too uh, happy about this, thinking, oh, great, well, this collocation method will always give me the exact solution. It's not always the case. And I just want to emphasize this. There is a very specific reason why we got the exact solution, and that was because our exact solution is a third order polynomial. If we were to approximate this deflection function as a second order polynomial, but the exact solution is a third order polynomial, we wouldn't actually be able to get that exact solution. So it's just a little heads up there to not get too excited. It's more of a coincidence rather than the norm when we get our approximation solution actually equal to our exact solution. But yeah, that's it, guys. That's the point collocation method. Like I said, nice trolley method. You look at virtual work in the Rayleigh-Ritz method. They seem very complex in theory. They talk about potential energy work done on the system. Meanwhile, you got this method that comes along and says, hey, why don't we just make sure that this differential equation holds at certain points? <laughs> nice and easy, right? So yeah, that's it, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I will see you guys in the next lecture video.